All right, before we get into the video game segment, y'all, uh, we do have some updates on Major League Pokemon World Cup number two. Uh, David, if you would, please. Yeah, uh, so first off, the very first match in the uh, round of 16 was 7-seed Eric Burkhalter versus 10-seed Patrick Ilg, where Patrick Ilg did an impressive two rounds to one victory over Eric Burkhalter, who valiantly had quite the battle there. Um, Ramo Alexander Maltez, uh, pulled off a, uh, victory over Sylvia Gatuniton. So the four seed will advance there to the quarterfinals and he will take on the winner of Wayne versus Kevin. More on that in a little bit. Uh, and also the eight seed Victoria Ladawick takes on the nine seed Eric Thomas and Victoria won that one two rounds to nothing, advancing her into the quarterfinal round to face the winner of Alex Cohen versus Akihiro Suki. And on a side note, it's a good thing that she doesn't live in the same state as me because she has, in fact, heard heard my little teasing about her battle with uh, Patrick in the pool play round. And uh, if we were in the same state, well, David would be doing this show by himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, also, also, uh, just to uh, add on some additional uh, information for you guys... Um, uh, I just found this really interesting, but I actually did tally up the longest and shortest distances between competitors in the round of 16. You ready for this, Jeremy? Bring it on. Okay, the longest distance between the two competitors is Justin Salidi versus Isabel Brundle at 4,400 miles. As a matter of fact, four of the matches have people with at least 3,500 miles apart. The shortest distance between two is Wayne Trimnell versus Kevin McAdams with 18 inches. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, they live in the same apartment. <laughs> that works. <laughs> like literally just move a seat in the couch. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they don't they don't even have to share friend codes, just you know, local <laughs> wireless play. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. I can say that. So that is uh that's all the Major League Pokemon news. Next week uh we will announce the uh what are the basically the rest of the tournament and of course throughout the show I will talk about the semifinals, the finals, and of course the champion will be crowned yeah. on Sunday. Also also I'm confirmed Firmed as being the uh, number four seed in the consolation bracket, but since that was by by no contest, I'm not counting it. So last door bust lives. <laughs> All right, let's go to video games now. <laughs> All right, video games, and of course we're going to start with what we're playing, if anything. I am playing this really really fun game called Life Simulator. I don't know if I mentioned it on a show beforehand, but it's like, you know, you just play the game of life, except you just, you know, not die. That's the entire point is just not dying. So you have to make sure that you eat properly. A little bit of Dragon Ball Xenoverse. And I'm and I'm getting hooked on 2048. Yes, it's, it's this puzzle game. And I've made it to 1024. I've gotten a 1024, a 512, and a 256. Just could not pull off the 2048 just yet. Ah, uh, binary. How we love thee. <laughs> but it's funny because there's actually this one site where you can uh, play the 2048 game and you can uh, get Bitcoin for each achievement that you manage to get. Well, at least pieces of Bitcoin called Satoshi for the those not initiating cryptocurrency. And you get uh, and you get this money starting at when you reach uh, hit a 128 square. So it's kind of fun, Jeremy. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, on my end, aside from all the uh, usual stuff, I have been playing a little more 4E than usual, uh, though not this past past week because uh, it was uh, all of my uh, roll nights were uh, on hiatus uh, for the week because of people being on vacation and such, which, you know, it, it, it happens, especially right. when you're uh, playing in the online space. Right. Uh, but in one of the campaigns, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the show before, if I have, well, you're hearing it again, because my memory sucks, uh, in one of the campaigns, I actually have started playing a, uh, Warforged Sword Mage with a, uh, Samurai Blake background, uh, called Dinobot. 
For those of you who are fans of Transformers, that name might sound a little familiar. And it's by design, because I deliberately created him to be a pastiche of the Beast Wars character of the same name. <laughs> to the point that his Warforged appearance is basically like a mechanical dragonborn. Wow. Yeah, so he's got a more reptilian face, got a tail, swordsmanship. I, I wanted to make him a sword mage, just because I, I it's a class that I've Never really gotten to play, but I've kind of been interested in, intrigued by for the longest time. Uh, there mm -hmm. was there was actually one time during a D and D encounter session that I actually played a uh, hex blade, which is the warlock version of this. But uh, I wanted to create the sword mage. I mm -hmm. made. I'm probably going to lose people who have no idea what I'm talking about in D and D four e. <laughs> uh, I made him Aegis of Shielding, which basically means uh, he's primarily based around uh, intelligence and constitution so that he can get in, take hit, take hits, keep up, and keep his uh, fellows standing. Uh, he's not that great with face skills. In fact, much like his namesake, the only, uh, the only uh, face quote, skill that he could use in skill challenges that he's any good at is Intimidate. Quite something. So. Oh, by the way, I'm if you don't mind, Jeremy, I'm going to leave a link to that 2048 game for those of you that want to play. If you manage to reach the 16,384 square, which, by the way, I'm far, far away from doing, you get to, you win 75 bucks. Cool. Yeah. Uh, oh. Good luck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Also, I have, uh, for certain values of the word play, also been playing WWE 2K15. I say for certain values of play because, well, my laptop kind of sucks and it's super, super laggy whenever I try to play it. But I did manage to uh, create uh, a new character based on my old e-wrestling persona of uh, Meryl Shadowbird Waters. If any of you have uh, WWE 2K15 out there and want to download him, um, uh, I've tagged him uh, for very good reason with the keywords Smart Way Out and SWO because I actually created him for uh, the Smarties uh, s Smart Way Out series. Uh, he's a YouTuber uh, and a Twitch streamer that I like. I've been a Patreon subscriber of his. For some insane reason, he made me a mod on his Twitch channel. I still haven't figured that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gloating. I'm seriously confused. Uh, <laughs> what was he thinking? <laughs> No, but but seriously, he's a really cool guy, and he loves wrestling, uh, pro wrestling, as David and I do to to at least a somewhat of a minimal extent. He started a stream where he takes characters and puts them in simulation matches in WWE 2K15. You know, he's got aside from the usual uh, WWE suspects, he's got created characters of Finn Balor. Uh, he's got, uh, the Super Lucha Brothers, which is basically a luchador version of Mario and Luigi. He also has Wario and Waluigi, fittingly. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, created characters of other famous wrestlers like Colt Cabana, uh, the late, great Dusty Rhodes, complete with polka dots. And, uh, also, uh, he who shall not be named by order of the WWE who you cannot play online unless you be banned. Seriously. What? Jeez, yeah, ser seriously. If you play as Chris Benoit, as a Chris Benoit online in WWE games, you are going to get your ass banned. I kind of don't blame them. But uh, anyway, I created uh, Shadowbird, and actually during his most recent Smart Way Out, I realized that during when I created him, I kind of messed up his gear because he has per perfectly fine in-ring gear, a perfectly good in-ring gear set. Unfortunately, it didn't transfer over to his entrances, so when he first did his entrance, he was basically just coming out in a beanie and a singlet. <laughs> Which actually was pretty funny, because that means when he got into the ring, 
it, he basically got dressed in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> that's a first. Hey, that's a nice gimmick, actually. Yeah, he does have a nice custom move set. I've mostly focused him on uh, centering around head strikes because uh, his signature move is the blackout, better known more recently as the curb stomp. Yes, I have that as his signature move. What's his finisher, you ask? End of days. Okay. Okay. Well, I only picked that one as his finisher, mostly because it reminded me of a finisher I had created late in my uh, pro yeah, e-wrestling career. So, so it, it was the closest I could come to it, since WWE doesn't do create a finisher anymore, and even if it did, I wouldn't be able to do that because my computer sucks. Anyway, go check him out. Uh, look for the Smarty on YouTube. Uh, he'll have links to his Twitch channel there. You can subscribe to him on Patreon or on Twitch. So, yeah, subscribe to the uh, Smarticus Network for the low, low price of four ninety nine, five bucks cheaper than the WWE Network. <laughs> 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 he's he's worth it. Trust me. Uh, new releases before I uh, lose myself completely. Uh, some of you may be playing this as you're listening to this particular part of the podcast. Batman Arkham Knight for Xbox One, PS4, and PC on the J- June the 23rd. Some of you may have been out for the uh, midnight release, and if so, God bless you. <laughs> In my case, what the hell's wrong with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. Uh, also out on the 23rd for the aforementioned platforms, uh, Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, which is the game that just preceded, uh, DMC. Uh, those of you who are fanatics of, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, nice alliteration there, you've got an alliteration, alliteration, you've got an expansion coming out now for the PS4, PS3, and PC, called Heaven's Ward. Also, this game has been out for three years on the PC, but it is now coming to the PS4, formerly from Sony Online Entertainment, now from Daybreak Entertainment, Planet Side 2. Uh, for those of you who have been playing Tales from the Borderlands, Episode 3 is now out on damn near everything, except for Nintendo. And uh, on the 25th, for those of you of a more artistic bent, for the Wii U, Art Academy Home Studio. Ooh. Too bad I can't draw. I can draw a turtle. (laughs) Yeah, you know, Nintendo goes on to Miiverse, and they see people doing all those wonderful things on the Miiverse post, and they thought, why don't we give them another outlet to do their art? Which is just fantastic. They also released specifically a Pokemon version, where you can actually learn how to draw Pokemon yeah, I well. actually have friends that were uh, doing that on Art Academy, and what they drew was pretty nice, admittedly. All right. Nice work. And uh, one last one. Keep, this is re- technically released, but keep in mind this is an early access game, so uh, caveat mTOR warning here. Uh, Second Warfare, available on Steam. It is a uh, first-person shooter. So... But yeah, early access, so caveat emptor. <laughs> Last but not least, we do have uh, a little bit of cleanup work from E3 to do. Uh, first of all, uh, on the uh, Fire Emblem Fates, I believe I had said that it did not appear that uh, that it appeared that it was going to be one game on one cartridge. After all, um, I was wrong. It is going to be two separate games. Uh, one entitled Fire Emblem Fates Conquest, which follows the Norpath, and one uh, Fire Emblem Fates Birthright, which follows the Hoshido plotline. Of course, it's not going to be an easy choice either way, because there's not really a wrong or right side to this. Uh, they They have made... Made sure that whatever decision you make, you are going to feel a punch in the gut for leaving some people behind. So, uh, Aww. yeah. 
also, of course, we've been seeing more information about some of the thing, things that uh, have been released. Um, Last Guardian uh, did not see the release date during the uh, actual Sony conference, but if I remember correctly, they did eventually announce that the release date is going to be in 2016. So we now actually have a time frame which is making people a lot more optimistic about this announcement of The Last Guardian than the last few times. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> so, yeah, but... Yeah. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good stuff coming out on the way. Uh, those are really a bit the two uh, updates slash uh, <laughs> recants that I uh, had to put in. I am still, though, looking forward to uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which, by the way, incidentally, is from the same people who did the Killzone games. So it's a complete different change of pace from the kind of games that they're used to making. The Killzone series is more the, you know, next-gen fast-twitch shooter genre, and this seems to be more of, more kind of a action survival and, yeah, I, I, I really still... That's still probably my, my most favorite game to come out of... Uh... Oh, also, uh, the uh, puppets from the uh, Nintendo uh, digital event. Yes. They were actually Muppets. Yeah, which makes my uh, Muppet Show joke even funnier. <laughs> They were actually created by the Jim Henson Company, and it was direct. The scenes were directed by Brian Henson himself. So, so that makes my Muppet Show joke even funnier in retrospect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's really all I've got. So, uh, do we have any, anything else you can think of, David? Nope. I think that's the show. All right, then. Uh, of course, uh, we've got uh, many ways that you can get in contact with us, uh, many wonderful things that you can do for us. Let us know what we're doing right. Let us know what we're, you think we're doing wrong. Please be nice about it, though. David? Casualmodepodcast.com, one site. You can flame us there. Uh, Facebook.com slash Podcast, the big-ass YouTube channel link, the big-ass iTunes link, the big-ass SoundCloud link. Wait, so SoundCloud link's not big-ass. <laughs> Um, and then you got Tumblr, Instagram, my pin, my personal Pinterest, and of course Twitter. I am at zero C H Harpoya. I'm at Shadowbird Seven Twelve. And I believe that is it, Jeremy. Yeah, that's it. So until next time, uh, I'm Jeremy. I'm David. And later, y'all. Bye.